In this lesson, we're going to go over dashboards, and dashboards are a very good way to show any type of reporting, save searches, all types of actionable data that you need to make decisions throughout your day. And it's also a really good way to set up your day so you can look at your dashboard, see anything that jumps out at you of things that you need to have immediate attention on, and do some planning of your day. In this lesson, we're going to go over a pretty high-level version of the dashboards, and I'll cover some of the simple self-explanatory ones and dive into just barely into some of the more custom ones so that you can dive into them even further on your own if you need to, if any of them jump out at you. First of all, you're going to go into this Home button and click on Dashboards. And that's actually where I am right now. I just don't have any data in there right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click this Personalize button. And you can see there's a couple tabs here. Standard Content, Suite Apps, and Currently Used. The Standard Content are all the ones that you can add and drag and drop into it. Suite Apps are anything additional that, you could, that could come into your account via Suite App that you purchase. So let's say that you purchase a specific suite app that does that has some reporting capabilities attached to it, then they may have one already configured and ready to go. Currently use is just displaying what's on this site already, and for me it's just the settings. The first portlet that we can look at is this analytics one. And this is going to be a really big one that you can use for quite a few things. We're going to go to these three dots over here, click setup, and you can see that there's a lot of different types of already preset analytics in here stuff for the manufacturing workbook uh, there's purchases build workbook purchases ordered workbook sales invoice workbook lots of them sales ordered workbook so let's go ahead and just scroll through these so you can kind of visually see them a little bit if you haven't been exposed to these yet and I'm just gonna for this example I'm just gonna say some sales let's say sales by item um, I'm gonna say um, bike components because on our demo site there's some bike components on there and you can specify things and break this down even further if you need but this is what it would look like what what this report would look like and you can kind of scroll down within it too and see some of those sales and if you want to just remove this you can click remove if you need to do a refresh on this one you can click refresh if there was something done recently that you want to have a view of uh, otherwise uh, you know you're probably pretty good with this one you can also open it up directly by clicking here and go into the analytics button this is a fairly new feature in 2020 uh, that, that they came out with and now you can see all the types of analytics you can do it's actually a pretty neat feature the next one is bank reconciliation I'm just gonna click it in here and we've got a lot of just demo data in here right now so here is what that bank re reconciliation summary would look like. I'm not really going to go into too much detail there because it's pretty self-explanatory. And for just to clean this up, I'm just going to click remove. And you can also add your calendar on here as well. And if you're not familiar with the calendar, you can add things to the calendar and you can actually integrate other people's calendars as well. And let's say I had some, some random thing that I needed to put on here for today I'm just gonna click Save and we'll go back into our dashboard and I'm gonna have to refresh this because I just added that and it would show up right there so just like any other calendar right a custom portlet I'm not gonna dive into this it's essentially everything that you can make custom and that is not available up here right now so that is something that you'd want to probably have your consultant or developer do or take a lot more time training and reading up on sweet answers. And then the custom search will display any type of custom search. I've already created a search right now that's called inventory levels, I believe. It's basically being used to show what items I have that have inventory. The criteria is, does it have inventory? If yes, show. So I have it that safe search in here. I believe it's called inventory levels yep and I'm just gonna call it whatever I want right levels of inventory so you can see the title and you can decide how many results you want within this portlet so that it doesn't clutter up things too much let's say that you just have like 10 items that you sell and over and over and over again then this is a great option for you sure we'll just pick some other colors and um, background type I'll switch it over to a grid and we'll click save and now you can see that you have all the items there's actually a total of 806 in here 
and you can navigate through them within here as well. Or you can click edit and it will take you directly to that specific item and then you can make any modifications that you need pretty easily. All right, back in the dashboard, let's continue on. So you can select KPI meters and there are some presets for the KPI meters already in that cash flow. There is this um, merchandising rules. There's quite a few things in here and it's just a simple KPI meter and you're going to need to make sure that you have data for this to actually show information. For instance, for the KPI meter for income, I don't have any money in there because I haven't had any money come in in this, this period or the last period. That's just because I haven't put any data into this demo account. The one that you might actually use quite a bit will be this KPI scorecard. And I'm going to go ahead and set up an example. Let's just do financial ratios and let's click save. And you can refresh it or if you need to customize it further, you can look into what that would look like. And you can look at all the different KPIs that are doing some comparisons and the formulas within them and how that information is being compared, especially on the periods and any other custom and highlighting information that you need, maybe some audiences, certain roles that you're needing to add to. So it's a pretty powerful tool, the KPI scorecards. There's a lot of flexibility on what you can do with it. But it just takes a little bit of working with and you got to know a little bit about KPI scorecards to get the data that you need. And key performance indicators are a really good way to have just a summary of different KPIs. We'll go into this list. I'm going to drop it in there and do a quick setup. And this is a way that you can just list any specific record that you may want. Let's say I want to list a bunch of my items and the results be 10. So it's essentially your item view that you may have. So if I go to list accounting items, it's going to be essentially the same view as what I have there. So whatever is showing up here as my, my default view will be showing up over here as well. It's a good way if you're looking at the same information every day to display it right here instead of having to navigate to it every time. My login audit is really just an audit of your login. I don't really find this one too useful, but it's a good way to just quickly access that information if you need to get to it somehow. But if you have to look at it frequently, it's a good way to get at that information pretty quickly. One of the most useful things that I find for the dashboard is this new release. And this is a good thing for decision makers and your admin to be able to see what new is coming out that you may want to implement into your NetSuite system. For instance, this one is showing the release for 2020.1. And there's going to be a lot of things being added and you're going to want to see what those release notes are so you can improve your system even further. Phone calls are a great way to add things for your CRM is maybe a good example for that. Any types of phone calls that you have scheduled later on or that you need to have follow up on, you can display them here. And you can also be adding your phone calls over here in activities, scheduling, phone calls, new, and that's where it'll show up right here. This quick ad portlet is a great way to add information in really quick. Maybe you are a customer service rep and trying to enter in cases or um, different types of tasks, but you can set up the quick ad here on what type you want it to be. If you wanted it to be maybe a lead that you had, you could have the form be for a lead and you can set up that as well inside of the lead with the quick ad but it's generally gonna have this information here. You can dive in further on how to customize this form a little bit more, but they come with a pretty good standard base and will get you started so that you don't lose leads by forgetting to enter in the information. So at least you have the essential information you need to get basic data in there before having to come back to fill out the rest of their information. So I actually think this is a great tool for anybody that's working in customer service or within your sales team. The quick search is a pretty handy tool if you don't know how to use this global search bar very well. In fact, I actually find it pretty useful still for things that I haven't figured out the prefix for. For people that are new to NetSuite, you might know that you have to add these prefix for finding a specific item number or um, finding different information. It helps you make a more specified search and help you find what you need a little bit faster. But things that you may not know to have the prefix for, like, let me think, um, like a zip postal code. You're, let's say you're searching for a zip or a postal code. I don't know what the prefix is offhand, but maybe it's zip, zip file. That's probably not it, right? Or maybe it's postal code. 
So instead of having to guess what each of these are and try and figure that out, you can just search over here within the zip postal code. Let's say I want to search for just some zip code. And you can see what types of zips you may find for that. It's a handy tool to define your search a little bit more to get the exact information you need, especially if you're not very good at knowing all the prefixes for this global search bar. RSS slash Atom Feed is a handy tool to connect information internally within your company, and it's a way to display other website content and have it display within your dashboard. For instance, let's say that you have a blog that is internal that you use, or maybe you even have a blog that is used for that on your website, and you want to be able to show that same blog content to all your employees. Maybe make it easier so they're, they're aware of content that they can share. Or let's say that you want to show your stock prices if you're a publicly traded company. You can add that information right here. In fact, I'm going to go over into lists, website, RSS feeds, and I'm going to go ahead and click on this and you'll see that I've created a couple basic ones. And these are just simply links, uh, NetSuite blog and Wabash stock price so that you can see that how you can easily add links at least without doing anything complicated with HTML. And I'm going to add in that right here. I'm going to start with NetSuite blog. I'm just going to click on it so you can see what I did. And all it is, it's just pulling this link right here and displaying it with some description. So I'm going to go over here, go to setup, and I'm going to click on, they have some ones that you have already pre-made here, but I'm going to click on one of my custom ones, NetSuite blog, and number of links, 10. So it'll show up to 10 links if you want it to. You can even post specific articles. Now if I go back into here and select that Wabash feed, you'll notice that it's just a link to whatever I wanted it to link to, which is not terrible, but you may want it to actually display this information in a little bit more of an organized fashion, or maybe you want it to display a little neater, like a Facebook feed. You can use RSS generators like this one. So I want to generate my Facebook page so that all of um, our internal employees can see what content we're making. So I'm gonna input it in here and it'll generate some type of feed that is a little bit more visually friendly. And this is a little um, snippet of what it might look like, what that feed might look like. And there are some paid plans, but there's also some free ones too if you'd like to. The RSS feed is a pretty neat tool to share information internally within your company. Now I'm going to add recent records. And this is a great way to navigate within your NetSuite system a little bit easier. Now it's not the perfect way, but it's all it is is doing the same information up here and displaying it within your dashboard. The next one we're going to look at is reminders. I think it's really good for maybe your CRM or sales, or maybe even for anybody doing some project management. You can go into setup and specify what types of reminders you want to display here. For now, I just add opportunities to close, all items, and estimates to print. I have a couple of these here, like opportunities to close. Here's an example. You could click on them and look at that search query. I'm not going to go into report snapshots too heavily, but let's take a quick look at it just so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to drag it in here and you can see that you can compare a lot of different information. I'm going to go into setup and let's look at some of the drop downs on what the snapshots could be. You can compare sales, um, lots of different things, customers, buy sales, invoices, items by sales, sales reps by sales, all that information with date ranges. And you can have the different types of charts, um, area, line, bar, column, uh, the colors. That's just some styling stuff. SMT links, it may or may not be available for you, depending if you have Sweet Commerce. All it is is site management tools linking into your Sweet Commerce websites. For us, we have this demo website right here. And site management tools is a way to manage your Sweet Commerce website with a more drag and drop type feature. Most people will not have this. Search forms are a neat way to have a saved search on your dashboard. And so I'm going to go into some searches here. And these are just different views. We'll do a custom item view. And let's say that I want to look on an inventory item. An inventory item, that's some criteria, any inventory item. Or let's say I wanted to look at any inventory item or non-inventory item. I, I selected control and then clicked it. 
Okay, and then I'm gonna just do a search here. And then it'll show me just a quick search for that items too. So it's really just a simple way to adjust your view. Shortcuts are pretty simple. It's just displaying any shortcuts that you've had made available. Shortcuts are listed up here and I've only added scripts and I've shown that on a different video on how to make those if you're unfamiliar with them. Tasks are just displaying your tasks that you have available to you. Those tasks are listed in activities, scheduling and tasks. And if you were to create a new one, it would show up right there. And finally, we have Trend Graph. And Trend Graph is a great graph to use for decision makers to see how their business has been trending over the past year, last quarter, or whatever. So I'm going to add this in here and let you see what it can look like. It's a pretty nice graph to use for different meetings and status meetings because you can just download images and export the data. I'm going to just click Setup so you can see what it looks like. And we're just going to put an example in here. We'll do an area chart, KPI of sales, which in this demo account, I don't really have much. And we can put in trend type weekly, the moving average, we'll show that as well. Um, period to calculate, moving average, yeah, we'll do two. And um, that's, that's basically it. We've got some styling stuff in there too. So I'm gonna click save, and we will see some differences within our graph. All right, there's not a lot of data in there, obviously. Let's extend this to yearly. And you'll see there's a little, data in there now as well and i'll have that information in there um, for this example there's not any sales data to show and that's why it shows a very negative number for sales this year well that is basically it for dashboards you can dive more into them even further to see how you can customize them to greater detail i would suggest taking a look at custom portlets even more maybe reading up on them and sweet answers to see what they can do. This, this is a little bit more complicated because it can involve some scripting and some other development work, but they can be really handy to get any information that you don't currently have with these existing portlets.